Thanks for listening to episode 123 of the Clive Barker podcast, The Return of Paul Kane. Uh, Jose and Rob are there for this one, and I wasn't able to make it, but it was a great interview. So in addition to talking about Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell, they also discuss Hellraiser movies and Peter Atkins. Uh, Paul was also at a recent event with Hellbound actress and author of the recent Voices of the Damned, Barbie Wilde. Uh, He talks about his upcoming book, Sherlock Holmes and the Crimson Mystery. Uh, It seems like this one just came out, and this other one's also on its way. So Paul obviously is a very prolific writer. Um, And they talk about uh, a comic adaptation of his monster story, The Disease. So check it out. This episode of the Clive Barker Podcast is uh, sponsored by Don Bertram Celebrate Imagination benefiting texas children's hospital uh so celebrate imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at texas children's cancer center up to 50 percent of the proceeds will support the program where artist don bertram volunteers monthly so please join us in donating to the program at texas children's cancer center there's a link in the show notes on the main website at cliveparkercast.com that will take you where you need to go to get one of his prints or art book and help out this wonderful program. Uh, Any friend of Clive Barker's is a friend of ours, and we thank him for his support. I want to say, also, you know, you don't have to commit to buying anything. Just go take a look at his artwork and then kind of decide for yourself. But I think uh, his art is great. It's reminiscent of Clive Barker's and of Aberat, uh, but it's definitely his own style. And, um, you know, and and it's a great cause. Hello and welcome to episode 123 of the Barker Cast. Today, Ryan unfortunately couldn't be with us, but as usual, you have me, Jose, and Rob. Hey guys. And a very special guest returning to the podcast, author Paul Kane, to talk a little bit about his amazing new book, Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell. Welcome to the show, Paul. Hello. Thank, thanks for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it was a hell of a ride reading this book. Oh, I yeah. mean, both <laughs> me and Rob have posted our uh, spoiler-free reviews so far. So congratulations on this fantastic novel. Are you happy with how well it's doing so far? Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I'm staggered really by the by the response. Uh, people seem to be loving it. So, which is, and thank you both for for the reviews. You recently had an event at Waterstones, joined by Barbie Wild. How did that go? Yeah, it was a week ago tonight. Um, very well, very well. Um, we both did readings. And there was a Q&A and then a sign-in. Uh, but yeah, it was well attended. We sold lots of books, so you can't ask for more than that, really. <laughs> Fantastic. Speaking of Barbie Wilde, she did a very good uh, – she wrote the uh, introduction. The introduction to the Servants of Hell. Yeah, she did, yeah. yeah. Very, very, very good. good it was too, yeah. Yeah, I'm very grateful to her for, for such a fantastic introduction. Yeah, she, and that was one of the reasons as well, you know, that – I mean, she read from Voices of the Damned, which which had got you know she's got Cenobite stories in there, but also the fact she'd done the introduction and you know we knew each other. We did an event in Liverpool about a year ago as well, so yeah, it was a really good evening. And you even took uh, the her uh, Hellraiser story uh, that she had written and kind of put some of those elements in the Servants of Hell. I did, I did. Yes, yeah, so I called some of the, a lot of spoil. I mean, a lot of you know <laughs> Easter eggs in this book as usual. I love reading your stuff, just catching. All the Easter eggs. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. Just a little word of caution for our listeners. Um, if you're listening to this episode and you haven't read this book yet, Sherlock yeah. Holmes and the Servants of Hell, I, I would totally recommend you guys go read it first because we're going to we're gonna try to steer away from big spoilers, but occasionally we might mention a character name or so. But uh, we'll, we'll try to do as spoiler-free <laughs> as possible. But definitely go buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and it was a great uh, mashing that you did of two literary universes, um, Sherlock Holmes, which is a very well-loved character mm-hmm. by a lot of people, especially in our generation. Yeah, I grew up uh, watching – for me, Sherlock Holmes is always going to be Jeremy Brett. Yeah. Uh, that's the one that I visualized when I was reading this book uh, because that the old Granada TV show, which I don't know if Americans are very familiar with it. Uh, Rob, have you ever seen that show? Uh, no. Okay. I have not. Ah. It was uh, it was uh, uh, done by uh, produced by Granada Studios, and uh, Jeremy Brett he got a little bit typecast in that show. I think whenever he made like other movies that were not Sherlock Holmes, uh, he still got pigeonholed into like um, 
stories that took place in uh, in the beginning of the century. And then I think he had like maybe one or two roles where he actually was happy and said, oh, finally, I'm in the 20th century. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, um, for me, my introduction to Sherlock Holmes was always Peter Cushing mm. uh, from mm. the film adaptation of uh, Hounds of uh, the Baskerville. That's oh, what yeah. I, I saw, you know, Peter Cushing throughout this book. Yeah. But there's been all kinds of actors that have. Yeah, yeah. that also had Christopher Lee, right? Uh, yes, yeah, Christopher Lee. Yeah. Was. yeah. Good movie. Yeah. yeah, it was a Hammer Hammer film, wasn't it? I think. Yes, I remember. Hammer. Uh, well, I mean, Jeremy Brett was was always my Holmes as well growing up. I think that's, you know, I'd, I'd highly recommend going away and, and finding the Granada uh, series. It's absolutely fantastic. He throws his, you know, everything into it, his heart and soul into it. Jeremy Brett, which is probably why he got a bit typecast um, in the role. But yeah, uh, yeah, he's all for me. He's he's my favourite kind of three um, Holmes. Really, everybody's got a different kind of Holmes that they. You know, in the portrayal of whether it's in literature or whether it's in, you know, you go back to the to the Conan Doyles or, you know, uh, more recently, Anthony Horowitz has been writing Holmes books and um, and in the in films and TV, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch and you know Robert Downey Jr. and everybody's got kind of a different one, but and people reading it will kind of without without realising it, I think I've put lots of different <laughs> nods to different Holmes in 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 the story, so. People are kind of recognising lots of different ones in there. So I mean, I, th- I don't think I did that consciously, but it was, uh, you know, people are recognising. Oh, that's you know, whether it's Tom Baker or Peter Cushion or whoever from Italy. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So of course, every, as everyone knows, Sherlock Holmes at this point is in the public domain. Uh, in 2013, a, a judge in Illinois mm. uh, ruled that the uh, the use of most of Sherlock Holmes stories was uh, was mm. was free to use. So uh, in, in the UK, copyright lasts for 70 years after the death of the author. So it's well into the public domain by now. Yeah. 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 Which is why you've seen a lot of like, the series that Titan um, have been bringing out. And there's a, a few authors in there like George Mann and Guy Adams, and James Lovegrove. I mean, Guy did a, a kind of mashup of Sherlock Holmes and, you know, The Island of Dr. Moreau. So things like that sort, oh, sort cool. of inspired me a little bit to, to kind of, because uh, I was thinking about how could I do a Hellraiser story? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I was kind of thinking, and right. it goes back to the 80s when I was watching Jeremy Brett and reading the Conan Doyle, so reading classic work and watching Hellraiser. So it's always been that connection in my head, I suppose. But, um, you know, when I was starting to think about doing this, it was it was kind of that, the fact that there were lots of these Holmes books around. And also the kind of, I was having to go at some of the Holmes stories myself, uh, um, The Edge uh, anthologies which Charles Prepolek and J.R. Campbell were doing, so I was I was kind of getting getting into a bit of Holmesian horror myself. So that was a, a big uh, inspiration. Yeah, I mean, one of the good things that came out of reading this book was uh, I like to I like to listen to music while I'm uh, reading. So I, I ended up listening to a lot of the Christopher Young soundtrack for Hellraiser <laughs> and the Patrick Patrick Gower's <laughs> wonderful soundtrack for uh, the Granada series as well. <laughs> um, on to the Hellraiser side of the story. This book is dedicated for Clive, mm. creative genius and friend and true inspiration. I think nobody's going to argue with that. those words, which are a very beautiful dedication yeah. <laughs> there. Can you share with us what sort of feedback oh, you got from Clive Barker? Uh, well, I, I, right from the very beginning, it was like a, a fact I had to go to kind of Clive and, and pitch it to him and um, do like this very detailed synopsis. Mm-hmm. And and then I was getting feedback because originally it wasn't um, going to be the Cottons uh, who approached Holmes and Watson. It was I, I forget what name I called them, but um, it was just going to be a couple that had had this this thing happen to them. And straight from the interaction of the Clive said, just make them the Cottons, you know, just. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. it, it was that it, it was that kind of uh, feedback and that sort of thinking, really, almost like a, I suppose, like a parallel um, reality mm-hmm. in which this was happening instead of happening and sort of or, or maybe like happening to like ancestors of theirs, or it could be like a parallel universe where this happened a hundred years before, <laughs> right. before it actually yeah. happened in the thing. So that was the kind oh, of yeah. thinking I think that it was it was kind of you could take it separate from from uh, from that or you could kind of think well this might happen because i think there's a line in the book where it says you know this this has all happened before and it might you know it'll happen again mm-hmm. yeah. so i think there was this kind of you could take it however you want to really you know what you want to to take from that so uh, so yeah so clive's always been very enthusiastic last year when we were choosing the cover there was feedback 
coming you know coming across um and you know uh, christian francis as well was was kind of offering um suggestions and things and uh, sam sam gretton was the artist who who did the cover for solaris so even up, right up until you know like <laughs> very late in the day there was there was kind of feedback coming so which was which which was incredible to you know <laughs> for me anyway <laughs> <laughs> of course, I love the uh, the use of the alternate designs for some characters mm. that that you use, especially from from Hellbound and and some <laughs> some of them were originally imagined by Peter Atkins, but you found the perfect use for these alternate versions in this amazing Victorian setting. I think they just fit like a glove. The Malahad Institute. Yeah, that was. I was going to ask you, did you talk to Peter about that at all, or just get like how he envisioned that character originally, or well. I've, I've kind of well, you, you know, like you guys, I've, I've sort of interviewed, and I mean, I've known Pete for quite a while now, and I've interviewed him several times. Obviously, this has kind of come up, and also, I've also That's interviewed true. Tony, who directed, you know, the oh, second yeah. one. So, um, get yeah, I've, I've, I've sort of let them breathe their their thoughts about these these characters for for quite a while. So I didn't, I didn't mention it to Pete um, before I started to write it because I didn't really want to get a, sure. I wanted to kind of get my version down and maybe see, see what Pete thought about it afterwards yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, haven't, I haven't actually spoken to him yet about it so I, I don't know how, how he feels about that yet but it, it just, I, I, thought I told him nice. about it I actually discussed it with him in an email and he uh, right. was like oh I didn't tell him it was the Malahide Institute though I was like well Paul Kane wrote this really cool you know you know, homage to <laughs> yeah. your, your script, and how are you just like, oh, cool. I'll let... Absolutely, yeah. I, I keep meaning to kind of get into, but it's just been so busy over the summer, and uh, I must drop drop Peter line and just kind of, you know, get his get his take on it all. But I'd, I'd like to think he'd he'd read it and kind of be sm smiling wryly to himself. I think he would. <laughs> I really do, because I was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It, it's great yeah. that um, this yeah, book seems do. to be doing very well. I found a copy yeah. of it here in Arizona in my <laughs> local Barnes and Noble in Chandler that I usually visit. Hey, Barnes and Noble, send us a check. So so that was a very satisfying thing to find mm. that there because. Uh, to be honest, I think every time I go into a bookstore, I try to look into the shelves and look for my favorite authors. And sometimes I find Clive Barker, sometimes I don't. And in this one, actually, there's still like a Scarlet yeah. Gospels there. But almost yeah. next to it, I was very surprised to find uh, The Servants of Hell. And I, I, I took a picture and I sent it to you uh, 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 by message. And that was yeah. that was a fun thing yeah. to uh, to share. It seems like people have really been getting along with this. They've been sending you pictures of their books and their copies and stuff, and you've been sharing them. So that's that. That must be fun to have all this feedback from the readers. Oh, absolutely! I'm I'm, I'm delighted by it. You know, over the moon. And uh, I've been getting like fan art sent to me. You know, what they thought the Cenobites looked like, and you know that that the the main four as well. You know, that, that I sort of created. But also, people kind of telling me that they're going away now, and after reading this, and, and some people who. I mean, it's kind of designed so you don't have to know too much about the Hellraiser mythology or Sherlock Holmes. I mean, I don't know, don't think there are many people alive that don't know <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. But um, it's designed to just kind of jump in, and it's just a, just supposed to be kind of a, just an adventure that anybody could get into. But people are kind of mailing me and saying, oh, I, I liked it so much that I'm going away and watching Hellraiser, or I'm reading the Hellbound Heart, or I'm going away and reading the Conan Doyle stories for the first time. And that's to me, that's uh, I, there's no greater kind of uh -huh. pleasure pleasure for me yeah. as an author Seek that people are going away. Stuff. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. I'm, I'm delighted by it. <laughs> well, yeah. You've caused me to go back and watch some of the Granada episodes. A particular one that I read that I saw mm. when I was reading this book was, uh, I don't know if you can recall this one, it's The Adventure of the Devil's Foot. Yes, it's, I do, yeah. 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 That's the kind of Holmes that you kind of narrow down in the story. It's like a Holmes that's not afraid to to push the limits of his physicality, you know, it, he, he, he has his mind over his own body. He, he controls himself. Like at one point in that episode, he takes his syringe that from his little Morocco leather case yeah. and he just buries it in a beach, like putting that away, like he's going on a detox. Yeah. <laughs> and most people would have to go mm. into check up into a clinic or whatever. But, you know, Holmes's uh, or mental prowess is so strong. He can actually will himself to yeah. or release himself from addiction just by focusing on it and. And it, it's kind of like this one. And this one, I think, as a Sherlock Holmes fan, the first two parts of this book are just amazing. All three parts are great. But I'm just referring to the first two because I think you nailed Holmes perfectly. Oh, thank you. And Watson. He's as powerful as he always was. Mm -hmm. You know, the perfect counterpoint to Holmes's uh, kind of surgical mind. 
Watson is like what balances him with some warmth and allows the reader to connect with the narrator. And so that's what I connected with too is the Watson aspect of it. I really liked friendship aspect. That's always been my favorite part of the, those stories was Watson. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Aspects to him that you know he was well, he's, possibly could go crazy in this story. I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. I mean you really that's put it. you really put the characters you know uh-huh. no pun intended through hell. So <laughs> I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I mean, I mean that you know through necessity that they're, they're they're kind of my versions of. of Holmes and Watson because they've, they've never been through something like this before so I mean it's going to change people if, if you go through an experience like this so I mean yeah. I won't give, give too much away but it does change them and you can kind of test the, the friendship that way and you can kind of I mean there are parts where there's, there's a few misunderstandings you know and, and things are happening that that um, you know neither of them you, you get their point, one point of view and then you get another point of view so it's like I, I like the, the fact I could kind of play with that a little bit so um yeah, well, that, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> I appreciate, I appreciate that. And uh, and and when you begin a chapter, sometimes since this is like Watson writing down a manuscript, and, and I like the fact that sometimes when you change chapters, Watson goes yeah. back and does a quick recap of what happened, like the pre yeah. in the previous chapter. It yeah. kind of makes it seem like a, a serial yeah. of sorts. Oh, right. oh yeah. well, I appreciate that. I mean, some people have kind of said, "Oh, there's a bit of repetition with it," but I couldn't really because I've got to include kind of Watson's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a yeah. little recap as such, because because in in his mind nobody's. I mean, there, there's a little bit towards the end that explains how we might be getting um, Holmes's point of view. I, I, I don't want again. I don't want to give too much away. But as far as Watson is concerned, he's writing the only account of this that that, that there's going to be. So um, you have to kind of get it from both both points of view. So there's you know by necessity there's a little bit of repetition. There. Hopefully you can get one side of it, then you get another side of it from two different people. So you know, it's, that was quite interesting to write as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the third part is just so ambitious in scope and scale. I mean, this this could have been very tricky to pull off. But <laughs> yes. yeah, man. I just I have to say, your descriptions were totally on point, very cinematic. You had an interesting narrative trickery here and there to get Watson to witness some scenes he may not otherwise have been privy to. But yeah. but fantastic battle scenes. Oh, uh, thank th- you. This would make a very entertaining comic book miniseries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Touch yeah. words, I mean, you never know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that, would be, that would be good. Yeah, that would be good. Also, you mentioned that some fans have been sending you uh, some pictures mm. of their own takes of the Cenobites. But I've seen some of the designs that you've made on signed copies. Yeah, um, yeah. I immediately recognize the, the likes of uh, Fist, Madam, and Glass. <laughs> you know, g- great job on those. Oh, thank you. And uh, it really helped me visualize them while I was reading the book. Oh, fantastic. I well, think, I mean, uh, for me, when I was coming up with the Cenobites, it was, it was sort of a I'd, – I'd write a little description or something, then do a quick sketch. So some of those things that, that, that I'm doing, like remarks in, in book copies of, of books for people um, – are kind of based on those early sketches that you know I might I might have done in the journals. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you do yeah, a so sketch of, kind of uh, the plague uh, centipede? I have. Yeah, yeah. I did one recently. I think last oh, week. Oh, really? I'd like to see that because that was probably my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, obviously, it's not like you know these these are just how I think they might look, and other people have different interpretations. There's no right and there's no wrong, really. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I, they're fun to do. And there's, uh, there's actually I counted the, how many Cenobites you created. There's over twenty. Oh wow, there's over twenty. Is there? Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, and, I'm, like I said, I'm it's like a small little army. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. like yeah. I think they should make figures of them if NECA starts up their uh, Hellraiser. Uh, well, that, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be, be delighted. Cool toys. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be delighted with that. Yeah. This this book brought to the surface an amazing, glorious uh, a panoply of Cenobites <laughs> that I, I really hope to see in the Scarlet Gospels. Um, it, it was a very dense book, very tightly packed with descriptions, characters. Yeah. It, it reads slow. I mean, it starts reading slow because it's it's written in the same um, style as uh, Conan Doyle's uh, uh, books. But you're drawn into it. You're immersed until you look up and you realize that it, it's getting dark outside the window as well as in the story. So... <laughs> The style of it, the form and the style of it. it I think you've really nailed uh, Conan Doyle's style in this. And, uh, oh. oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. That's wow. Thank I put you. My review. I'm an absolute fan of this book. It's It, it was such an amazing experience. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I've, I've had people sort of mail and, and say that they could they were they wanted to go to bed, but they couldn't put it down, or they've taken a day off work, or you know, which I don't, oh, which yeah. I don't advocate. But I mean, that's that's really nice to hear that somebody couldn't put something down. Or I think I read something the other day that I'd given somebody nightmares, which was, 
<laughs> in a good way, you know. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's no great, greater. How long did you work on this novel? Oh, um, well, I, I suppose it was kind of ticking away from about two, 2009-ish onwards. So it was oh. kind of it's oh, quite, wow. quite, quite, quite a long gestation period for it because it was around the time that um, we were doing Hellbound Hearts. So uh -huh. I was kind of thinking to myself, how because I, as an editor, I mean, I edited, edited it with my wife Marie, uh, Marie and uh, it, I was thinking to myself, well, there's all these great sure. stories going in there from from all these kind of great writers, and we're editing it, but you can't put your own story in, in <laughs> you know, an anthology. So I was thinking, how can I, how can I do a story? How could, where would I be able to send it? What would I be able to do to it, you know, to get it out there? So uh, then the kind of homes thing started to come back to me. So. And I was writing, as I say, I was writing some homes. I mean, one of the ones, uh, the the first one that I wrote, the Crimson Mystery, um, got rejected from uh, one of the edge apologies that uh, I mentioned earlier. Um, but only because it's like a mixture of, I was sort of cross, trying to cross it over with red, with the red yes. uh, mythology. And, the you know, the feedback that I was getting was that, you know, people might not be familiar with, with red. I mean, the, mm -hmm. they are a little bit more familiar with it now because it's been around a while. And obviously it was the first novella was reprinted last year. And then the, the novel in the same book, the, the sequel novel was published. So from SST. So I said to Paul, you know, would you be interested in doing a, like a reprint of The Crimson Mystery with like the prologue of the, the third red thing? And he said, yeah, brilliant, you know. So that's that's something that's that's happening right now that we're doing like a little novelette thing and um, Roger Castello did the uh, Jaws poster and, and Empire Strikes Back did you know he's contributed the the cover for it so it's just fantastic but yeah I was doing doing all that stuff at that time around that time um, and it's funny you should mention that that episode of the Granada series because there's a nod. Uh, the great greatest mystery has a nod to that to that episode in it. So, <laughs> um, so I was writing kind of Holmesy and horror around that time, and sort of thinking, how can I do a Hellraiser uh, story? So that was how it kind of started. And there was also there was a kind of a, as well as the Titan books with the with the Holmes and a few other things. There was, I mean, it's still going now. Really, there's kind of a, a big upsurge in Victorian horror around at the moment. So uh, things. Uh, you've got series like Penny Dreadful. I don't know if you've watched any of those. Oh, yeah. Over there. Josh yeah. Ron, it's got Josh Ronette in it. So That's actually. right, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and films, good. yeah, and films like, I mean, just last year there was Crim Crimson Peak. Yeah, I have. Um, oh, yes. From Del Toro. Very good. So, I mean, oh, yeah, very lots, good. Of, lots, lots of this kind of Victorian horror around um, over the last few years. So, yeah, the gestation period has kind of <laughs> been while that all that's been building up, I suppose. So it's been quite a while. It's been quite a while in the in the, I mean the research of it was was quite uh, quite a long time in itself, you know just going away and and sort of refreshing. I mean it, I I was quite, I was kind of quite up to speed with Hellraiser stuff because uh, obviously the yeah. the you know the the uh, Hellraiser and their legacy. I, I kind of refreshed my memory a little bit oh, sure. a while ago now, <laughs> but also kind of going back and re rereading all the Conan Doyle and anything I could kind of get my hands on. Um, Sherlock Holmes wise and watching lots of films and watching lots of the Granada episodes and just kind of st trying to steep myself in it like I had done with Hellraiser mythology because I didn't want to get I didn't want to get it wrong you know <laughs> yeah right you're right on the money with most of for the cover did you design that or was that somebody else I uh, no no that was um, Sam Gretton at um, Rebellion Oh, uh, Solar, nice. Solaris Rebellion. So, and obviously it was it went through a lot. I mean, John, John Oliver, my editor, and went through a lot of people. Um, and I always love that were, cover. Once I saw yeah, it, I was hooked. Fantastic. You know, it really pulls the. Fantastic, yeah. and there were lots of kind of different different ones that they were thinking about, or you know, we were thinking. And obviously, then I say we were kind of communicating with Clive and sending things backwards and forwards, and and all that. That was about a year ago, I think, when we were, we're kind of having discussions about the cover. But yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with it. It's it's absolutely fantastic uh, cover. It just draws your eye mm -hmm. yeah. straight into it, and you know, the two aspects, of the <laughs> box. <laughs> you've even yeah. inspired Derek Neal. Yeah, you've even inspired uh, Derek Neal from Configuration Boxes to make his own servants configuration, like a red lament configuration. Yeah, that he cool. sent you. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. That. I mean, you posted that's it fantastic. on your page. Yeah, yeah. He sent. Yeah, I think that that arrived yesterday. Um, but you know, the yep. story itself inspired him, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's wonderful, you know, to have that in your hand. It's like the cover coming to life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I was talking to him about it, and he sent me some pictures, and I used them to illustrate my my own spoiler free review. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. yeah. With Servants of Hell, I think you not only managed to give the Hellraiser mythology kind of a fresh coat of paint, but uh, mm. you added a few walls here and there and expanded upon it. I mean, you, you populated this hell with so many different creations. Like Rob said, he counted like 20 different <laughs> Cenobites. You've showed us corners of hell that we've only seen here and there in the old comics from Marvel. Like, uh, yeah, one of the yeah. things that came to mind was uh, that library. There's a library yeah. that they go in at one point, and... I was hoping yeah. to see that one Cenobite, what was his name, uh, Gryot, I think. Big, immense Cenobite that used to be in the epic uh, oh. comics. Oh, I remember, yeah. 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 I, I mean, obviously, that would be different, a different rights <laughs> thing, because that that'd be the, But, I mean, you know, it's, it's, quite, it's kind of a generic thing that Hell would have a library, um, mm -hmm. and I, I hopefully have made it so, sort of different to the one that was in in those comics. But oh, I, want, I did want to nod to, to those because I remember that, that you know I love those comics I collected every single one of them as they, as they were sort of late 80s early 90s like 92 93 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you even connected it to different literary universes like Barbie Wilde's fantastic pantheon of leading female Cenobites that have <laughs> appeared in uh, yeah. SSD's anthology <laughs> yeah. Voices of the Damned so if anybody out That's there the hasn't read that book yeah. go read Voices of the Damned because yeah. there's an amazing yeah. set of stories a uh, trilogy of sorts uh, for a uh, yeah. for the female Cenobite, written by Barbie Wilde. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, well, of course, the first one was for um, Hellbound Hearts. You know, Sister, That's true. Sister yeah. Solis was for Hellbound Hearts. So like, from that, she, she went away and did two more and, you know, put the collection together. In fact, one, one of the other ones is from um, the Mammoth Book of Body Horror, Polyp, that's in that collection as well. So that's that's quite nice that we, we sort of gave... An, an audience to, to Barbie's fiction, or, 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 you know, initially. In fact, she said that last week at the uh, the event, and now it's, it's great to see her doing so well. On because you know, obviously, talented actress and presenter and everything else, and, and dancer and and stuff. It, it, nice to see like another string to a bow emerging now. So that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I have a mammoth book of body horror yeah, right, right here next to me on the shelf. It's still in the pile, though. <laughs> it's still on the pile. I haven't read it yet, but now I know that it's got polyp in there. So. That's, that's going to be a treat. Yeah. That was one of the funniest uh, stories that she had. Yeah, it was. Voices of the Damned. <laughs> it's crazy. So. It makes you, whenever I'm going to go have a, a colonoscopy, I'm going to think of that damn story. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it won't turn out like that. <laughs> Her stories did for colonoscopies what Jaws did for swimming in the ocean. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah. I think we actually told her that yeah. when we yeah, had her on I think the podcast. We did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's very happy about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Combining characters in the same story are always it seems to be difficult, but this one you pulled it off, I thought, pretty nicely of taking elements from both stories and weaving them together. Oh, thank you. You know, what, were you nervous? About, my question is, were you nervous at all about doing that? I mean, sometimes it's well, hard to please, have, I mean, to please both it. sets of fans. Like, you got Batman versus Superman. You know, how do you please? Yeah. You gotta yeah. have, you know, Superman served a certain way and Batman served a certain way. So, were you yeah, at all yeah, nervous yeah. about that? Uh, the answer to, I mean, somebody asked this last week at the Liverpool event, and, and oh, my right. answer was just quick, just simply, "Oh my God, yes!" You know, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't terrified. You know, because obviously, as you know, being in that in the <laughs> kind of Hellraiser fandom, you know, and, and the podcast and everything else, and and the, it's the same with the Sherlock Holmes fans. Is that they're very open to let you know if you get it wrong or they don't like something. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's been a few, uh, you know, reviews or, or people that haven't quite, you know, didn't, didn't mm -hmm. quite connect with it or, or whatever. The vast majority of them I seem to have, you know, seem to have done a good job. But also it's the fact that I'm a fan myself and, and yeah. I wanted to, to try and, you know, serve them uh, correctly, I suppose, is, is, is what I'm trying to say. It's, I, I, want, I, I was kind of thinking about what would I like to see in this book? What would I like to see happen next? Or what would a, a Sherlock Holmes fan like to see happen now? What would a you know, fan of Clive's work like, like to see happen? Or a fan of Hellraiser? So I, I just kind of stuck to that, really. So I thought if I'm, if I'm kind of making myself you know, um, happy with the material, then I, hopefully, you can't please everybody, but it's... Yeah. it's you know, hopefully, the, you know. But with this book, I've seen nothing but positive reviews. I mean, I, I follow you on your wall, and it's just been yeah. five stars, five stars. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's just I mean, been it's amazing. Just been, yeah, very positive. Been I, I never, 
I never thought it would it would connect the way it has done with with people. They just seem to love it. So, you know, God bless, <laughs> yeah. God bless everybody who bought it and you know who, who posted reviews on on Goodreads and and various other places because it was on NetGalley and um, you know the reviews have been coming thick and fast. It's been like you know um, I've been posting some book? on my. Hmm? How long's the book Sorry. been out? How long has it been out? Oh, about yes. a month now, hasn't it? About a and month, yeah. came out in July 12. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and I think the NetGalley, um, the, the sort of arcs at, at NetGalley came out about a month before that. So uh, people have been aware of it for a couple of months now. So it's, yeah, it's just, and they're still coming. The, the reviews are still coming. So A quick explanation why Ryan isn't in this episode today is that, unfortunately, he's been having uh, a lot of work to do. So he couldn't really uh, read the whole oh, book no. through yet. And he says, I am paranoid about spoilers, so please tell him I'm sorry. <laughs> because he's on chapter six, I think. Uh, well, I hope, hope he's enjoying it anyway. He's enjoying he enjoys it, it when, he, when he reads it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and say, say hi from me. <laughs> All right, we will. So another question I had here was um, yeah. not so much a question, more of a comment. You didn't just, and I, I might be projecting here, but yeah, I think you didn't just add Hellraiser into the mix. You also added some other things from Clive Barker, like a Nightbreed reference I think I got. And there's another yeah. one of a very famous detective. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so those are really, really fun. I mean, that when I was reading that uh, Watson's Adventures mm -hmm. in Paris, and I was like... Uh, <laughs> First of all, of course, the Institute was, was just amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How you incorporated the, oh. the creator of the box in there. It was, it was just fantastic. There's a particular quote mm. where someone said, uh, talks about what's below. When I read that, I just, I immediately pictured Lylesburg saying, what's below remain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess, did I get it? Or am I just no, like. No, that was, that's there. That's the, you know, the, lots of little things in there that people will, you know, ho hopefully it wouldn't trip anybody up who, yeah. who doesn't know. Uh, I didn't catch that one. Or, I, mean, I didn't really think of that one. Yeah. I uh, yeah. bought the books, of, the books of Blood one. Uh huh. There's <laughs> yeah. the Books of Blood yeah. one. There's a book, yeah, Books of Blood. There's, there's all kinds of things in there. And they're just little things. I mean, it's just. I mean, I did. I do this with the with the red books, as, as you know, because we talked about this, didn't we, last year? So, yeah. it's it's the, just kind of little fun things that if you. Because mm -hmm. I, I love stuff like that myself. When I'm reading a book and I see a nod to some something or somebody. I mean, a lot of my friends um, in the writing world, they might call a character by and you know, like a friend of theirs that we we'll know as well. So you kind of smile when you see that. So I just love little nods to things that hopefully aren't too ob obtrusive for, for people who won't know anything about that. But, and if you do get them, it's kind of like, ah, right. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Like, uh, for example, uh, there's so many references in here, but, um, like I was trying to say in my spoiler free review, they grow out of the story in a normal way. So it's not like, Oh, you can tell that this was just shoehorned in here. Thrown in there. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, yeah. some things they, they just add to the story so much that, that it's just, it's part of the story. So you don't really, sometimes they escape you because you don't really see it as a reference. But then when you go back, you reread it and you're like, oh wow. yeah, this is probably a reference to this and that. Rob, when you were reading the book, I think you, you said that you thought at one point there were too many references, oh. but, uh, but that it didn't really affect your um, appreciation of the story. No, not at but all. But I mean, one of the things that we were talking about was I, that you liked what, what Paul did to Elliot Spencer's story, right? Oh, yes. I mean, or a soldier, yeah. just where all that came from. Because you never really got a lot of that, the movies, and I always liked Elliot Spencer. And again, and again, this is only kind of a possible um, imagining of, of that of that kind of you know storyline or that timeline or, or whatever. So it's it's kind of again, I like the sort of parallel universe description that a lot of people have been using. That this is kind of you know that that's that's if that could ha have led to something happen happening down the line, and and that that's even right. had a. Yeah. Big spoilers, but this was just another way that parallel universe. How you did the J.P. Monroe, yeah. and yeah. you named you named the, uh, the 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 gentleman's club that he you know owned mm. or whatever called it. What'd you call it? The vault Vulcan, volcano. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. you know, okay. the other one in, the, in Howard in the series yeah. called Inferno. So it's like this yeah. nice little you know. You put all these <laughs> exactly. nice little twists and stuff like that. I thought well, cool. You know, thank you for for you know. I mean, you never know whether you're putting too too many things in or, or whether it's, you know, help, helping the story along. Yeah, help, <laughs> you know, help. Part three, you have a lot of references there, but you think that you know what's going to come in the next page, but you don't. <laughs> and it's, you know, uh, big reveals that you had there. And I'm like, oh, okay, so this is going to be 
X, Y, and Z. And then I turn the page and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I see where the, the, the third part is where all the little pieces come yeah. together in the puzzle in a very satisfying oh, okay. way. And you're like, you're thinking this story is going to go in one direction, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah. okay. So this is the guy he's going to face. And it's like, yeah, that makes total sense. Oh, thank you. But uh, I, I, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, some of my favorite chapters were uh, uh, when when Watson is in Paris. Um, obviously, yeah. some chapters in the third part because it's just an amazing battle, and and also the opening. The opening, it's, you started off really slow. It reads pretty much like a Sherlock Holmes story, but then you start seeing that darkness kind of seep into the story, and and it's a gradual process, but it makes you understand. Yeah. Yeah. Where well, that, Sherlock Holmes is coming from after the Reichenbach yeah. Falls story, and and what yeah what happened to him and how he's you know facing his own mortality and 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 well you know so, some of the stuff in the the Conan and Doors is is like a gift to to somebody who's trying to put that that stuff in there because you know he 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 was different after the you know mm -hmm. after his uh, uh, encounter with with Moriarty so that you start to think to yourself well how could how could that link him with hell mythology and it's kind of all just like it's all there you know it, it, it slots in very nicely to what you're trying to what absolutely you're trying to do if you're doing a hellraiser story as well so um the first part of it is kind of oh, i was almost trying to do like a uh, like a mm -hmm. conan Doyle story like if they were investigating what was happening and and some of the the aspects like the uh, lot, you know, lot room mystery that again lends itself to the to the Hellraiser mythology. So you got all that kind of side to it, and then you want to kind of bring in the more Hellraisery aspects um, that fans like towards the you know sort of ha halfway point, if you like, and mm -hmm. and sort of you know after the first sort of hundred pages or so. So it's like, it's almost like a game of two halves, isn't it? It's like <laughs> true. You want to you yeah. want to try and sort of serve both lots of lots of fans, and hope, hopefully. You know, bring one one lot of fans who might be familiar with Sherlock Holmes and bring them along into the other half of it. You know, so it's um, so that so hopefully it's a satisfying whole uh, for for them <laughs> reading it, if that makes sense. Uh, it was very satisfying. I have one one final question for me. Uh, yeah. Rob might have a few more, but but I forgot where I read or heard this, but you brought it up uh, mm. while we were talking today. Can we expect Holmes to return to face the wolves of Blood Red in the future? Um, well, he does in Crimson Mystery, not to give too much away. Uh, and that, again, that's that's from SST, who did Bar oh. Barbie's thing and and did the the okay. you know Blood Red last year, which was like the the first novella, a reprint of that, and mm -hmm. the, the uh, second novel. That's so, out to get right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. pre pre order. I mean, yeah, the, I've got a link. I want to go order. Uh, uh, I know those the hardcovers are sold out, but I want to get a the other copy of it that's still available. Well, well I've been signing those today, which I have 250 odd signing sheets to do today, so my hands cramping a little bit. So the Crimson Mystery, right? Yeah, Crimson Mystery from SST, and the the ones that Rob's talking about that sold out the hardbacks have got a um, unique remark from uh, Glenn Chapel, who d does a lot of Stephen King's. Uh, you know, artwork for, for Stephen King books, and they're just fantastic. I, I put a few on Twitter as well today, and they're just absolutely wonderful. You know, the the you know, black and white pen drawings I was kind of signing on, underneath where he'd done these drawings, and he'd signed them as well. So, but that yeah, they sold out with that. You know, within a day, I think that was the hardback ones. But the paper, the paperbacks are fantastic. gorgeous. You know, they they look absolutely fabulous. The signing sheets are just wonderful. Well, I, and, one of the reasons and, I really want to get that is because of uh. Well, if it had, maybe this was just for the hardcover edition, but it, it had like it's going to have like a a sample of or something from the third book of uh, that series. Yeah, no, really that's, one. that's that's just like the prologue, really, of the yeah. third. Uh, but red, so that's third what got me excited red. about it because I really uh, love those books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to be the the third one is going to be a post apocalyptic um thing so it's it's kind of oh. taking it into the future really so oh nice and, nice. and what, what's going to happen with it because obviously i've got i've got um form with post-apocalyptic stories with the robin hood books and the <laughs> you know, um in fact one's out today a reprint of flaming arrow uh, yeah i saw that too today, huh? in the end of the end um from from Abaddon. but i've also got a, a post-apocalyptic novella coming out from uh horrific tales in september at fantasy con so you know the, I, I just love that that format the post-apocalyptic stuff and i thought well how can i kind of you know do this take this story into the future well you know 
maybe something happens that that there are a lot of these these wolves around and it's it's a little I've looked, I think we talked about this last year but there's, there's a definite nod to the Terminator films in yeah <laughs> in yeah. those so so if you you know if you ever saw Terminator Salvation you might have a kind of a bit of an idea what the third book is is going to be going to be like that kind or of style. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that kind of thing but but with the with the wolves kind of taking over really so you also uh, have a uh... A comic book coming out of an adaptation from a short stories of Monsters yeah. and Seas. Comic yeah, book, right? that's, that's right. Yeah, from uh, Hellbound Media. That's out at, at the moment. That's um, launched at uh, Horrorcon UK, where Doug was a, a guest last month. So how yeah. was that experience? G- good. Well, I, I I wasn't there. Yeah, but the comic the comic's fantastic. I wasn't actually there at the the launch because we had a, a oh, yeah. something else on in London at the time. But um, uh, Mark a, Ad- yeah, Adams. Yeah, Mark Adams. Yeah. Yeah, he he came up and I I did a a few remarks in the in the front, you know, covers for him to kind of feedback was again, was great. I mean, Mark Miller did the uh, introduction um, from Seraphim in there, so and obviously you know he's a comic comic book writer in his own in his own right. Um, so yeah, it's a really nice really nice comic. Um, I couldn't I couldn't be uh, prouder of that. <laughs> so excellent. So that's what's on the pipeline from Paul Kane. Uh... Crimson Mystery, and that comic book that came out. What's the title of that comic? I'm sorry. The Disease. <laughs> <laughs> the Disease. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and the the end of the end is out today, uh, which again is is the reprint of Flame Narrow. And next month is the Rot, which is the yes, horrific I saw that, yeah. no, novella. So yeah, it's all it's all quite busy at the moment, and you know, in the middle of a kind of a, a sort of book tours of, of sorts going around and and kind of i mean edge uh, lit in derby uh, last month it, that was the first event where copies of servants of, of hell were available from waterstones so it wasn't technically a signing event but people were coming up to me with copies of the book so i could sign them so you know and i've been to a few others between now and then i'm at dublin i should mention dublin ghost story F- festival next week so i think that's in about a week's time you're gonna be so, busy aren't you it's quite busy, yeah, <laughs> at the moment. So our UK yeah. listeners uh, now know where they can go to meet yeah. you and uh, get get co- signed copies of your books, especially like this Servants of Hell, Sherlock Holmes and the Servants of Hell. Uh, it's been out yeah. for almost a month, so yeah, go out there and buy it because it's really amazing. I really enjoy this one. Uh, yeah, Fantasy definitely. Con, Fantasy Con in Scarborough in September as well. Myself and Marie, so... But yeah, fantasy kind of yeah. They would go to, so I'm sure there'll be copies of the book there as well. At that, yeah, it's all it's all pretty busy at the moment. <laughs> Excellent. So I know you, you've been pretty busy. So uh, thanks for taking that time to to talk to us. And oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, always a pleasure. You know, yeah. you're, really, you've become one of my favorite writers of the past oh, year. Oh, thank. Oh, bless you. Know, you just, <laughs> um, so thanks a lot, and uh, oh, thank thanks you. for being with us. And I hope that. Uh, to, we can have you again soon. Ah, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> much appreciate. Much appreciate. Yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, you're very welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. You can find the show notes for this page and lots of Clive Barker news and features at www.clivebarkercast.com. Leave comments there or get them directly into the podcast by clicking the Send Voicemail tab on the right. Please follow us on Twitter at BarkerCast or at Occupy Midian. Like us on Facebook and join the Occupy Midian Facebook group. You can listen on the site or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Libsyn, TuneIn, Pocket Cast, Google Play, and Double Twist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Please take a couple of minutes to leave us a review on iTunes. It means the world to us and helps us spread the word about Clive Barker. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial fan site and podcast that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Films. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.